This video is meant to show you the Lightorama Sequence Editor's Chase Tool. The Chase Tool is this guy right here, but before we use them, let's do a little preliminary setup. Let's take the On Tool and turn that cell on, and now let's take the Chase Tool. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to click and drag, starting at this cell, and then going through a bunch of channels and a bunch of time. And let's see what the Chase Tool does when I do that. It has chased that effect through the amount of time that I selected and through the set of channels that I selected. Now, to really see why it's called a chase, let's uh, play the sequence and watch these channel buttons. The channel buttons will show you basically what it'll do when you actually hook lights up. It'll show you how the sequence will behave on your actual lights. So let's play. And you'll see it's chasing through these lights. So uh, that's why it's called a chase. Now, like we said, I selected a bunch of channels in a bunch of time, and the chase uh, chased through those channels for that time. So if I undo and then chase again, but for a shorter amount of time, it still chases, but it chases to this shorter amount of time, and now the chase will seem like it's going faster. So let's watch the channel buttons again. Now chased quickly through all of these channels. Or I could chase more slowly. So it's still chasing, but it's going through the channels more slowly. Now there's no reason why this has to be an on event. It could, for example, be a shimmer. And I could ch chase, oops, I could apply the shimmer tool here and then chase the shimmer through a bunch of channels. And let's watch the shimmer chase through all of these by playing. Or it could be a fade up, or any event it could be. Let's chase the fade up and watch the channel buttons. And in fact, there's no reason why it has to be a single event. It could, for example, be a fade up followed by a fade down. So let's chase that pair of events and watch the channel buttons. Now here's something that uh, sometimes surprises people. They'll have this uh, fade up and fade down and let's say it has a set intensity over here as well. And what they want to do is they want to chase this fade up and fade down through uh, these channels for this amount of time, for two seconds in this case. So they'll just do a chase. And that's not at all what they were expecting. They were expecting this fade up and fade down to be chased through. But instead they got a bunch of fade up and fade downs right at the start and a bunch of set intensities at the end. The reason that happened is because it's chasing this too. It doesn't care that there's an off event here. In fact, it's chasing the off event as well. So the reason for that is that so that you can do things like this. So it chased the fade up, the fade down, the off event, and the set intensity event. So let's watch that happen. So now if you really did have this and you wanted to chase uh, this fade up and fade down through here, and not chase this guy, what you would do is get rid of him and then chase. And that works as you're, you would be expecting, probably. Uh, so that's just something that uh, tricks people up a little bit sometimes uh, when they first start using the chase tool. So it's just something to keep in mind. Now, one other thing to notice is that the chase tool, it doesn't the, the effects that it inserts, they don't line up with your timings necessarily. They might line up with your timing, timings, but there's no reason why they definitely will. And that's because it's trying to chase them uh, at a constant rate so that all of them are on and off for the same amount of time, and it takes just the amount of time that you specified for the last one to end up here. And that's not necessarily possible if it were to try to match things up to your timings as well. So the chase tool basically ignores your timings. Now, let's uh, turn all of these off so we have a blank canvas. 
And what I've always been doing is I've been chasing down and to the right. You can also chase down and to the left. Or up and to the right. Or up and to the left. So the chase tool pays attention to the, the direction that you're clicking and dragging in. Now there's one last neat little thing about the uh, chase tool, which is in this clipboard section, this paste from foreground. This is mostly an option that you'll use for copying and pasting, which is a topic for another video, but it also works for uh, the chase tool. So let's say we have a bunch of shimmers as our background, and uh, we have this, we put a fade up there, and we basically want to copy the, or chase the fade up through here, but not get rid of the shimmers. We can do that with the chase tool. The first thing that we have to do is turn off the rest of the stuff in this first row, and then uh, paste from foreground, select the chase tool, and chase that through and it leaves the shimmers all there. And of course then we would have to go back and uh, put shimmers back into the first row. We couldn't have them there because otherwise the chase tool would have tried to chase them too and things wouldn't have worked out the way that we were hoping. So now let's uh, play this and we'll see all of these will fade up and fade down in a chase but whenever they're not, or they won't fade down, excuse me, <laughs> they'll just fade up in a chase. But whenever they're not fading up, they'll always be shimmering. So let's watch the channel buttons as we play. So there you go, that's chase with paste from foreground enabled. If we didn't enable paste from foreground, let's uh, just see what would happen there. it wipes out the shimmer. So that's about it for the chase tool. I hope this helps.